you be ever been in a situation where you needed to bring a dessert to a party or a graduation that you had to attend, but you didn't know what to make and you didn't want to make anything too simple? If so, Scotcheroos are a great idea to bring along with you when you attend a gathering or even if you need to bring a dessert to your child's game. Scotcheroos have been around for a while and are a great treat. They are a lot like Rice Krispies, but some, but you add peanut butter and chocolate chip and butterscotch topping. It's always important to have an easy and fun treat to quickly make when needed for an event or just to have at home. I have spent many years snacking on scotch roos at home as a snack or at softball games. I enjoy making these delicious treats with my mom. In this speech, you will learn the proper ingredients and utensils needed to make scotch roos, how to make this delicious treat, and how to serve them. First, you will want to choose the ingredients and utensils needed. When picking your ingredients, you may want to look around at home to make sh before you make a trip to the store. The ingredients needed to make the bottom layer are white sugar, light corn syrup, peanut butter, and Special K cereal. In an article, Special K Bars, that explained how to make scotcheroos, Allison recommended people to use commercially brand emulsified peanut butter. This is not to use it, they don't, they, she would recommend not to use a natural peanut butter, which has the oil on top, as you want the peanut butter to mix easy into your sugar syrup. The Special K cereal can also be substituted by Rice Krispies, but personally I like the Special K cereal better. The ingredients needed to make the top chocolate layer are semi-sweet chocolate chips and butterscotch chips. Now that you know all the ingredients needed, you will need to know how much of each one. For the top layer, you will need one cup of white sugar, one cup of light corn syrup, one cup of peanut butter, and six cups of Special K cereal. On the top layer, you will need one cup of chocolate chips and one cup of butterscotch chips. What is also important in making scotch roos are the utensils that are needed. The utensils that are needed are a 9 by 13 inch baking pan that you will put your scotch roos in to harden, a 3 quart saucepan where you will mix your, some of your ingredients in, a microwave safe bowl where you will mix the top chocolate layer, a measuring cup to measure out all of your ingredients, a knife, and then a wooden spoon and a regular spoon. Another small thing that is needed is cooking spray to put on the bottom of your pan before putting your scotch roos in there so they don't stick. Another small measuring cup that I would recommend is a solid measuring cup for the peanut butter when you're making the bottom layer. Now that I informed you on what ingredients and utensils are needed to successfully make scotch roos, you can talk about how to make the bottom layer. The second step to start preparing the bottom layer of the scotch roos is the second step in starting to prepare your scotch roos is making this the bottom layer. To begin, you will want to set out all your ingredients to make the bottom layer, which includes the white sugar, the light corn syrup, your peanut butter, and then your special K cereal. Next, you will want to get your, your uten utensils ready. You will want to start the stove because you are going to boil your sugar and your light corn syrup together. You will want to get everything out so it, this process will be as quick as possible. Now that everything is laid out, you will want to put your one cup of white sugar and one cup of light corn syrup into the saucepan on top of the stove. Right now I am putting the light corn syrup into a one cup measuring cup with the sugar into the saucepan. In the article, Scotch Roos by Kristen Merkley, published July 9th, 2020, the author states that if you don't want to overheat the sugar and corn syrup mixture or else the Scotch Roos will become dry and crumbly. Now that your mixture is on the stove boiling, once you will want to keep stirring it occasionally so the mixture doesn't burn. Once the edges start to bubble, take the saucepan off the stove and immediately add one cup of peanut butter into the hot pan. And this is when you will use your solid measuring cup to put your peanut butter in. And once you do that, you will just pop it out. Now that your peanut butter is in your mixture of light corn syrup and sugar, you will want to add your six cups of special K cereal. As you're doing this, you will want to occasionally stir the mixture so it doesn't become separated. You will need six cups of the Special K cereal. 
Once you have the special case cereal and peanut butter mix with the sugar and corn syrup, you will want to take it off. You will want it to let it cool for a few seconds before putting it into your 9 by 13 inch baking pan. Before putting it into the pan, you will want to spray it with some cooking spray so it does not stick to your pan. Once you have done that, the mixture should not be as hot as it was, and you will want to slowly pour it into the bottom of your pan. Once your mixture is in the bottom of your pan, you will want to press it down for a bottom layer. After you have pressed the bottom layer into the pan, you will want to set it aside to make the top layer. The third step in making the scotcheroos is to make the top chocolate layer. By making this layer, you will need to access a microwave to melt the chocolate chips and butterscotch chips together. To start, you will add one cup of cho semi-chocolate chips into a micro microwave-safe bowl. And then after you add that one cup, you will add, want to add one cup of butterscotch chips. Now that both of the chocolate chips are into your microwave safe bowl, you will want to put it in the microwave for 15 second intervals so it does not burn when it is in the microwave. After each 15 seconds, I would recommend taking your bowl out and giving it a little stir so your chocolate chips will melt together. I will continue doing this until the chocolate and butterscotch chips are completely melted together. While the mixture is still hot, I would immediately pour it into the bottom layer. When doing this, you will want to spread it out evenly across the bottom layer so you get the full chocolate on top. Once you have finished spreading out the chocolate mixture on the bottom layer of the scotch roos, you will have finished the cooking part of this treat. Once both layers are put in the pan, you will want to cool the scotch roos. The final step in finishing this process is to school the cotcheroos and, and serve them. Depending on how much time you have, you can either chill the cotcheroos in the freezer or the refrigerator. I would recommend putting them into the refrigerator unless you are in a rush and need to get them out.